Hi everyone. I'll give everyone a few moments to get on and join me. I'm David Kessler. If you're tuning in, say hello. Let me know where you're at. Uh, if you're able to join us, many people I'm sure will see this in the replay. So give me uh, just a moment here till people come on. And uh, if you're joining us, let me know where you're from. All right, well, uh, I'm glad to be here with you today. I'm David Kessler. Uh, many of you know me from my work with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross or Louise Hay on the books we've written about grief. And I'm the founder of grief.com that has a lot of uh, resources for you. I want to hop on today just because it's, uh, it's an interesting time. And many people I say that are not in grief don't recognize things that people who are in grief recognize. So this happens to be back to school season. I was just driving the other day in the ray on the radio and it was all about back to school. And um, uh, not only that, every store you walk in is about back to school. And it represents a couple things. Obviously, if you've had a child that has died, it's going to be tough reminder. And if you've had a loved one die in general, not a child, it's a sign that the seasons are changing again. And so you feel like this sense of, oh, here we go, back to school, we're entering the fall, it'll be the holidays soon, the seasons are changing, here we go again. So just think about that concept because it's not surprising that a lot... So, and my phone rings, so clearly we know this is live, right? Uh, hopefully um, that will stop. Uh, Paul, maybe you can text my friend there, Marianne, and tell her I'm live right now. So I got to figure out a way when I'm on Wi-Fi not to get calls, clearly. So we're talking about back to school. And when we talk about back to school or the seasons changing, triggers, of course, come up for us. And it's, it, rec it reminds you that one more season, your loved one is not here. The beginning of the holidays again, your loved one is not here. And I want you to think about that idea of, it just feels like, oh my gosh, what can I do? And I often think about, what can you do when a trigger like that comes up? And by the way, in a few minutes, I'm going to take questions. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to send them in. And of course, I'm talking about back to school. Just know at the same time, I also want to be really clear that um, uh, this is also a time when their absence is loud, right? We feel them gone, their absence is loud. So when you have these triggers, a couple of things I think. One, you can always send the person love. You know, it's an interesting thing that happens in grief is that we have this feeling that in grief, the love has to stop. And you feel like, I have so much love and they're gone. But that doesn't have to be the case. Just know you can still love them. I, I don't believe that our loved ones stop loving us when they die and I don't believe we stop loving them. But what happens in grief is you feel like, oh my gosh, they've died and I can't love them anymore. And that's not true. You can still love them. So when you get this trigger, just go, oh my gosh, it's another season. I'm going to send my loved one just a little sweetness right now. I hope wherever they are, whatever they're doing, whatever your beliefs are, I, I hope they're good. Sometimes I think about, I wonder what they are seeing. Sometimes I even ask myself, now that my loved one has died, what do they know in death that they didn't know in life? So it's interesting to think about that, to send them love. The other thing you can do when triggers come up around seasons or back to school, whatever it may be for you, is to do something in their honor. You know, I noticed in a lot of stores like Staples and things, they'll like have donate a backpack. Maybe you donate a backpack to a child. Uh, maybe you just, you know, give a gift of charity. The other thing is, take a walk in their honor, go somewhere that they uh, like to go or do, uh, or maybe just eat their favorite food or do something that connects, listen to a song of theirs. 
do something and go, this song is for my loved one. I'm sending them love and I'm, I'm thinking and really in that moment, connect with love to them. So just some information on back to school, just to let everyone know, I do want to take some questions. By the way, if you need more support, please check out the legacy groups. And uh, you can always find me and find lots of other resources on grief.com. And when you go to the homepage, there's a great buttons there. One is free, so you can click for a lot of free stuff. Also an attend button if you want to attend one of my lectures. I do retreats and one day lectures. I'm going to be in Oregon, Minnesota, Australia coming up. So join me somewhere in person. Or you can always check out aboutgrief.com for just a free 15 minute video to learn more. And don't forget about all the resources legacy.com has for you also. All right, let's look at uh, some of the questions here. Frankie, this is an awesome topic. I thought I was the only one crying at the start of school. By the way, if your questions are about back to school, great. And they don't have to be. I mean, your grief, your pain isn't on a schedule. So if you've got a burning question, uh, I'm certainly happy to answer. So Frankie says, this is an awesome topic. I thought I was the only one crying at the start of school. My son was killed in a car accident at the beginning of summer after the third grade. His friends are now in middle school and growing so big, I could just imagine what Eric would look like at that age, playing sports for his school. It hurts so bad this time of year. All the what ifs. Of course, that's very true. You know, I think about Facebook, Instagram is challenging at different times when you see everyone getting ready for school or graduation pictures or first day of school and you think, my loved one should be here. My loved one should be getting ready for school too. So that can be very challenging. So I think about those times um, that come up. So just like I said, Frankie, if you can do something in Eric's honor, if you help out um, you know, another child or anonymously or give a gift to the school, I think those are always really nice things you can do in Eric's honor. And, um, you know, it is tough seeing those pictures, so I want to acknowledge that pain you're feeling. And, and a lot of this, I always say, is just witnessing grief to see that looking at those pictures of the other kids starting school is painful. And it's okay to have a few moments of, what would Eric be like now? What would he be studying? What would he be like as a teenager? Whatever the age may be like. I'm not someone that really wants to squash that thinking when it happens. Thank you for writing, Frankie. A Melody says, we're preparing to be empty nesters in September. Our son goes off to college in another state. Now that my husband has passed, I have to cope with being an empty nester and a widow. Can you talk about the emotions with this and offer any advice? Sure. So you have what we call multiple losses, and a lot of us, unfortunately, have multiple losses. And in multiple losses, you actually have to separate out the losses. So here's what I mean by that. One loss you have is an empty nester. The other loss you have is being a widow. And what happens to us is we kind of go, I have all these losses, I have these losses, and they just become overwhelming but instead separate them out. You are an empty nester. Now that you have the house to yourself, what are you gonna do? So a couple of things. One, I always think about, I always think about seeing the pain and finding meaning in it. So on one hand, when your son leaves for college, you might just spend time in the house alone with that sadness. I mean, I can remember um, when my kids went off to school, I literally took a few hours and just reminisced and I walked into their room and, and I just remembered those things and all the memories. So I, I always say sort of witness that pain you're going through. Then at the same time go, now that my house is empty, how can I create, create more meaning? You know, do you go to a, 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 
a, a, a book club? Do you go to a something? Can you have friends over for dinner? Can you host things more at your house? You may have to actively bring people to your house now. So I think that's an important thing to do to sort of witness it and then also um, find meaning and do things to bring more life into your um, place. It could be a pet. That could be, you know, I don't know that that's for you, but just know that's often an option for people. The other thing is you're now a widow. So you want to get support in that area. There's groups online. Legacy has groups. Um, there's groups that you can go in person to. So just know, get that separate support for being a widow. What can you do for yourself? Can you honor your loved one who died? And can you also go out and do things to begin to create a new life that honors them. A new life doesn't end their memory, okay? So it looks like here I have a question from Leona. Let me see if I can actually read it myself here. And the answer is no, I can't. All right, I'll have to get Leona's question in a moment. Um, Susan writes in, slightly off topic. Why am I not seeing my loved one in dreams or feeling his presence? I see things like a coin on the ground or a sign in the clouds, but nothing other than that. It's been a year next month. So there is no reason that, you know, I can tell you why your loved one's not coming to you in a dream. You know, there are people who have one dream, there's people who have a lot of dreams, and there's people who have no dreams. So I, I don't know that there's a rhyme or reason to that, um, you know, your, your loved one might not need to come to you or you might not need it. Um, you know, you might want it, but not need it. The other thing is we talk about a dream making that you can do. So one of the things we find is if you can um, uh, do a, instead of watching the news before you go to bed or a TV show, look at old scrapbooks, look at photo albums. We find that photo albums help induce dreams. What you're thinking about and experiencing right before you go to bed is most likely to come up in your dreams. So you can try to create dreams that way. By the way, while we're on that topic, there's one thing you cannot do in your dreams. What can you not do in your dreams? You can't die, right? If you've ever had a dream, you're falling out of a 10-story window, what happens? You wake up before you hit the ground. So do you know what you should never do in a dream when you're dreaming of a loved one? In the dream, you should never tell your loved one that they're dead. I don't know why, but I've heard this from people in grief over the years and experienced it myself. If you're having a dream about your loved one and all of a sudden you say, wow, you look good for being dead or I miss you now that you're dead, all of a sudden what happens is the dream ends and you wake up or your loved one disappears. So just go to bed going, if I see my loved one, I'm not gonna tell them they're dead. I don't know why or how that happens, but it does. Uh, is there another question you can give me? Sure. Okay. Leona is going to visit her um, spouse's sister in a few weeks. Leona's going to visit her spouse's sister in a few weeks, okay. And we'll be revisiting several of Bob's favorite Places. Okay, several of Bob's favorite places. I assume Bob has died. Okay. And she is afraid that she's going to have a meltdown when she sees them again. And okay. is there anything that she can do for herself to, so that she can have a better time reminiscing? Okay, so she's afraid of having a meltdown. So here's a few things I would say to you. One, have a meltdown. I mean, give yourself permission to have a meltdown. Sometimes I phone the meltdown ahead in. I might say to those people I'm visiting, just know this trip's going to bring up a lot of memories. Don't be surprised if I have a little meltdown when I come. I warn them and give myself permission to have that meltdown. The other thing that I want you to think about is it when you're talking about I'm afraid I'm going to have a meltdown, is it grief or is it love? You know, we talk about, people talk about grief bursts or grief attacks. I don't find grief my enemy, so I don't like to call it grief attacks. 
But what I do say is, just know when all of a sudden those emotions come over to you, come over you, just ask yourself, is this grief or is this love? What if this is love I'm feeling for Bob? Great. I feel love, Bob. I still love you. Well, I, you know, I'm feeling your love in this moment. And just allow that to happen. And just know your tears are evidence of love. So let them flow. Don't try to stop it. And, you know, if your friends are judging your grief, you just got to let that go. They don't know. Okay? Uh, here's one I have from Janet. Janet says, my 19-year-old son, now gone, I assume that means he died, has his birthday right around back to school. I like to celebrate it, but his sister does not. She wants to keep busy that day with her friends and try to forget about it. How can I help her? This is challenging, especially if you're a parent, and I'm a parent, so I know this one. Her grief is none of your business. How she does her brother's dying and his birthday is none of your business. How you celebrate his birthday is your business. So I love that you still celebrate it, so you go celebrate it. And I've learned from siblings over the years that they just don't want to share their grief with their parents. And I know as a parent, we want our other children to celebrate that moment with us or grieve with us, but that's not how kids do it. The other thing you say, she's trying to forget about it. Janet, I want you to think about it. When someone says, I'm trying to forget about it, they're really saying to you, this is really painful for me and I can't dive into it the way you can. So just know she actually is dealing with it and she's going to be with friends and I bet you she'll talk to her friends about it and just let that be. You celebrate it, let her deal with it the way she does and especially don't make her wrong for doing it her way. She's doing it perfect for her. Any other questions that have come in? All right, well, I'm so glad I could pop on with you. Just know, check out Legacy Groups. Uh, check out grief.com. I have a lot of resources there that are free. You can also find uh, online classes and courses there, as well as um, uh, come to one of my lectures. So I hope to see you here again. Thanks for coming on. And uh, I hope if you have a friend who's, you know, has had a child die, maybe you're a little more aware that this may be a tough time for them. So thanks so much for joining me. I'm David Kessler. Take care.